Hello everybody, I'm John Brewer and this is Survival Exploration 201. This episode we're going to be covering the mechanics of welding and grinding in Space Engineers. Having found an appropriate asteroid to be our home, we're now setting about dismantling our spawn ship to move the critical components to the asteroid. Upon log off, our spawn ship will disappear and we might have real trouble finding this location again if we lose access to the medical bay to respawn. Unlike other voxel-based games, such as Minecraft, Space Engineers requires characters to have access to certain equipment they don't necessarily start with to develop ships and bases. To convert ore collected from the asteroid into ingots, we need a refinery. And to build components for blocks, we need an assembler. In addition, we need a medical room to respawn in the base if our characters are lost to accidents. Finally, we need to bring down a power source for all three systems. We'll be using the reactor from the spawn ship to power the base. This is a delicate phase of the game. If the respawn ship is despawned or critical components are lost, the colonization attempt on this asteroid may fail. One of the major challenges in relatively large-scale deconstruction like this is the storage of components. Every game of Space Engineers has a number of settings regarding storage capacity and speed of various operations. In this game, we have all settings on Realistic, or 1x. As a result, each of our engineers has an inventory capacity of 400 liters. The practical upshot is that we can easily put a lower bound on how many trips we need to make to transport each block down to the base by adding up the volume of each component in it. For our starting base, we need to start with a platform, which we can either build out of the armor of the spawn ship, or by mining, refining, and assembling iron into steel plates. Then we need to start transporting the critical blocks. The small reactor uses 1,557 liters of space, or at least four trips. The medical room will take up 5,260 liters of space, and will take at least 14 trips. The assembler is the smallest, at 722 liters of space, which we can do in two trips. Finally, the refinery takes up 4,556 liters of space, and will take about 12 trips. All told, it's going to take at least 22 ships between the ship and the base to transport down everything we need. Of course, that's just a lower bound. Our welder and our grinder take up inventory space. The drill is particularly large, so we're probably best leaving it in storage while we dismantle the ship. It's worth taking a closer look at how cube blocks work in Space Engineers as we pull the respawn ship apart. When we weld or grind a block, we get this status window on the right side of the screen. This bar shows how many components the block needs, how many it has, and how complete the block is. Anytime you weld a block, any components in your inventory that the block needs are immediately added to it. When you grind a block, any components above the current completed level are removed. If you have enough space in your inventory for them, they're added to your inventory. If you don't have enough space for them, they simply drop into the world and start to float away. Finally, there's the critical components. The critical components are what actually cause the cube block to do whatever it is supposed to do. The critical components are marked by a blue and red line on the progress bar. If the welding progress is above the red line, the component will work, even if it isn't fully complete. If the progress is below the red line, the component is inert and incomplete. As we weld or grind, you can see the progress indicated by the shading on the component icons themselves. From bottom to top, the components show the order we need to add them to weld the block. From top to bottom, they show the order we'll get components out of the block when we grind it. In theory, we could use the critical limit to shave trips off of our transfer, but in practice, it isn't particularly useful. We can, however, use partial grinding to take down most of the steel plates off the respawn ship without having it fall apart. The single ship is much easier to deal with than multiple pieces floating around inside the asteroid. To avoid the respawn ship drifting around the asteroid if it gets bumped, we've left the reactor aboard to power the inertial dampeners and the thrusters. We learn what a problem that can be when, during final disassembly, two of our players bump into each other at reasonably low speed. The stationary engineer in blue is immediately killed, after the medical room had been moved, but before the reactor had been taken down to the station. Because we have three engineers, this is a relatively easy accident to recover from. We complete the disassembly and we get the medical room back online quickly, but if this had been a solo endeavor, an accidental death while the medical room was offline would have been a disaster. That's all for this episode. Come back next time when we start building our fleet of ships. Until then, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.